How do you break into comics? That's one of the most frequently asked questions for anyone working professionally in comics or even just having been published. As you probably know, there are very few steady jobs in the comics industry, but what does it mean to just be making it as an artist, as a creator or as a writer? How do you know when you've made it and what's it like in there with all the cool people? I used to suffer from this misconception that you could uh, somehow reach a point in your career where you didn't have to worry anymore, where you went from like flailing around in the water to finally reaching land and you could just lie on the beach and chill for a little while. My personal experience is not that. My first comic came out in 1999 and I got newspaper coverage. I was interviewed for the main comics magazine here in Denmark. I got reviews. I even got to go on national television to talk about my upcoming book. So what happened? What happened was the book sold 348 copies. Now for Denmark in the current state, 348 copies is actually not bad. But back in those days, I didn't know anything and I was deeply, deeply disappointed. I thought I would sell thousands and thousands of copies. And when I told people I made comics and was the creator of this fantastic book, nobody had heard about it. And although I was able to get illustration work and storyboard work and ad work and stuff like that, not from the book necessarily, but certainly from the skills that I acquired making it. The book itself never really kicked down any doors. So I chose my next big project, The Devil's Concubine. I wrote the script in English because I wanted it out in the US market. Not that the grass is greener over there, but it's a bigger lawn. So at least they have that going for them. Because it's such a huge language area and everybody can read English, then it's theoretically possible to sell more English language books. So I was hugely ambitious with this. I got a trailer produced. I got a cool website produced in Flash, which nobody uses anymore. And I tried for years and years and years to send out samples to publishers uh, by mail. That was how we rolled back then with signed waivers and printed pages in an envelope. And then, Nothing. The occasional rejection letter, but mostly just silence for months and months and months. I was almost ready to give up when a Danish publisher asked me what I was working on. And I mentioned this Herculean task that I had taken on that seemed to be going nowhere. And he said, well, send it to me. I'd love to see it. So I managed to produce the entire thing in form of rough sketches and lettered the whole book so it was readable. By the way, I had to translate it back into Danish. The publisher, Fahrenheit, shout out to Pau, said yes, and we were off to the races. With a publishing deal, I was able to give myself a deadline and the final push to finish the book, which was released in Denmark in 2008. It didn't get half the media attention from my first book, which in all honesty is not that good, but the media landscape had changed a lot in the years in between. I think the big comics magazine had closed and a lot of other things like fan scenes and the newspaper review section had gone the way of the passenger pigeon. My hugely ambitious Tarantino-esque graphic novel wasn't really riding the wave of anything like it. It had been more than a decade since Pulp Fiction came out and there was nothing really in the Danish comics scene to really compare it to. I honestly don't know how it sold. I never really looked at the numbers. I think it barely broke even. But now I had a finished book to show. And since I already had the script in English, it was easy to letter the whole thing. And now the technology had moved along so I could just send publishers a PDF in an email with a link to the website and the trailer. It took maybe a year, two years to get a deal, but eventually IDW picked it up. Amazing, right? Made it. Everyone I knew was impressed and the book came out and I went to Comic-Con and I did a signing and everything. Uh, there was even a producer in talks with various people in Hollywood to get a movie made and nothing really happened. I think The Devil's Concubine got like four reviews and at least three of them came because I met somebody at a convention and kind of twisted their arm. I don't know that the book bombed necessarily. I mean, it still exists, it's out there. You can find it on Amazon or Comixology and it's a pretty good book, I think. But I was already working on my next book, so I wasn't really paying too much attention. I was so focused on getting the follow-up 
finished. Stiletto came out in Denmark in 2013. It got nominated for the biggest comics award, got good reviews all around, and I was sure it was gonna get published in the US, no problem. I mean, I'm through the door, right? And then it turned out to be a revolving door and I was back outside again. IDW passed on Stiletto based on the sales of The Devil's Concubine. I thought Stiletto was a way better book and my skills as a storyteller had vastly improved. So it was weird to me that nobody picked it up. So you could say that I had broken in, but then I was back out again and hitting the con floors, showing my stuff to various publishers. And then I met this guy, Chris Miscavige. Now Chris and I are kindred spirits. We hit it off immediately and he convinced me to draw a couple of shorter stories that he wrote, but he always had this big project in mind, Thomas Alsop. We produced the first 22 page issue and was pretty quickly picked up by Boom Studios, which if you don't know is also a pretty big publisher. At that point, I was savvy enough not to count all my chickens before they were hatched. And I was being humble and, and self-deprecating in a very Northern Europe type of way through the whole experience. But when we were called best miniseries of 2014 by USA Today, it was hard not to think, this is it, we've made it. This is now a thing. I'm gonna get tons of offers. How am I gonna navigate all this? How am I gonna fit all this new work into my calendar? And then after I think issue six of eight, Boom wrote us an apologetic email saying, guys, sorry to tell you this, but we are not continuing this series beyond the planned eight issues. So if you have anything you wanna change in the ending, maybe you should consider doing that at this point. Chris and I were obviously disappointed, but we stuck to our guns and didn't change the ending at all. We still thought that that was how the book was supposed to go. And like I said, it was very well received in terms of reviews and fans and stuff like that. We got some extremely heartfelt emails and messages from people who had read the book and were deeply moved by it. Still not making it in any sense of the world, still not breaking in. Chris knows a lot more about breaking in. He's actively trying to break into the US market. I myself got distracted with other things. I wrote YA books and crime novels for the Danish market. When my first novel was published, I thought, wow, this is a game changer. I'm now a published author. And then the next book, you know, doesn't sell half of what the first book sells. And I'm like, what? But this is a way better book. What's going on? But let's get back to comics. Stiletto did finally come out in English in 2019. And that's another instance where I could have smoked my own crack and told myself that now is the time. Now I'm breaking in, but I know better. It's one step forward and three steps back in this business. Getting published is great, but it doesn't wave a magic wand and change your life all of a sudden. And neither does getting great reviews or getting work grants or winning awards. Here's a fun story about awards. I was invited to be on a panel in this huge book fair here in, in Copenhagen. The panel was all about award winners. And first I'm like, what? Why are they asking me that? I didn't win any awards. And it actually took me a couple of seconds to look up and realize that, wait, I have won an award. In fact, I've won two. I have them standing right here on my shelf. I had already forgotten about it. I didn't see myself as an award-winning whatever. That's another misconception. If you think getting an award will change your life, the work doesn't become easier because you won an award. In fact, there are plenty of examples where it gets harder to be a creator because now you need to follow up that success. You now have eyes on you and now you have to live up to your own reputation. I think that's one of the upsides of changing arenas. If you produce a jazz album, maybe follow it up with a rock album so it's not so easily comparable. Artists who are able to renew themselves and stretch their creative muscles in new disciplines, I think have a way better chance of longevity than the people who just try to follow up their latest success with more of the same. But that's just my opinion. But it's certainly one way of subverting this whole idea of breaking in. Stop focusing on trying to get over the fence into the promised land. Take it from somebody who has been in the promised land and wandered around and said, oh, this is, this is nice. And then all of a sudden realizing that I'm no longer in the promised land. Now I'm outside the fence and now I have to what get back in and how did this happen? And 
Now I have to climb this damn fence once more. So as a call to action, a prompt for today, instead of trying to fill this bottomless hole with all these external factors that are really beyond your control, try to focus on the things you can control. Your process, your working methods, your own projects, what you want to learn from them and where you want to challenge yourself. Focus on getting to know people in the industry, building friendships and helping others. Do the research, do the work. The great thing is that the work and what you put into it is totally within your control. So find your enjoyment in the daily grind of trying to create the best work you can because you friggin' love it. And hey, if as a side effect, somebody notices your stuff, great. Maybe you can break through the media attention barrier and maybe you can get some traction. And then you have a better chance to get some eyeballs on your next project. By the way, my comics creation course is now on Skillshare. There's an affiliate link in the description below. I hope you will check it out. It's a 30 day free trial and uh, yeah, thanks.